Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look at how the Unsharp mask works. And uh, we're going to show something of the origins of it. And but first, let's have a quick look at the Unsharp mask itself. We're going to zoom in here to one of these here, letter that's slightly blurred. And if we turn up the radius, not a lot happens until we get the factor turning up. Because when we turn up the factor, you can see it starts to go here lighter on the inside, darker on the outside, and if you increase the radius that spreads outwards so it goes way beyond there like that. So you go come back to somewhere that's kind of acceptable. So what happens with this then in the original one here? And this is what was like in the old days of darkrooms where you had a negative that came out of the camera and you're going to shine a light down through here onto the paper underneath and it would then get your print. That's the normal way. However, to sharpen the picture somebody came up with a great idea, which was that you put another layer on top, which you invert effectively so that you've got a positive and you do this through another development process. And you then add to that a blur. And the reason you, the way it's blurred is effectively because the light comes down here is focused on the bottom layer here. You've got a sheet of glass in between, which means this one is slightly out of focus. And the combination of the negative and the positive and the blur ends up strangely with the thing being sharpened. So let's have a look at something about how this kind of happens. Here's a nice edge here. And I can hit Control J a couple of times because I'm going to need some extra ones of these. And we go to the live filters and the Gaussian blur. And we'll turn the radius up. And you can see the way it sort of spreads outwards from here. And effectively what's happening here is if you go before and after is the light has sort of bled into the dark and the dark has bled into the light. So this is the interesting thing that we've got here. And because we want a dark line down here and light line down here to create a contrast. But what else can we do with this? Well. If we take this here and reduce the opacity down to 50%, you can see the layer underneath the original coming through here, and we've, but we've still got some of these lines across here. But however, they are light on this side and dark on this side, and we want them the other way around. We want this to be darker than the original and this to be lighter than the original. So what I'd like to do here effectively then is invert it. So I'll hit Control I. So now I've got the dark on this side and the light on this side. However, out here, these have gone back to the original just mid-gray. And that's because you're combining, because it's a 50% opacity, the dark and the light, so the negative and the positive, and negative plus positive collapses into the middle, and you've got that mid-gray. So what we're going to do then is when you've got mid-gray, you can then combine it. So I'm going to take this one and shift click on this one here and hit control G to have a group so all that is wrapped up nicely there and I want to combine it with an original down here and when I've got that gray here I know that if I click on the, bl the uh, blend modes here and go down to overlay then gray becomes the mid gray becomes invisible so I'm left with these original colors here so you can see this edge here if I pull out here you can see the edge is a bit clearer if I take that group off there, there's original, click that on, it's, you can see it, it is becoming more visible here. But what I can also do here with this group is I want to make these lines here a bit darker. So I will go to adjustments and to the contrast here. And if I turn up the contrast, those lines there get darker. And so when I zoom outwards and I turn the contrast up and down, I can even go the other way. I can sort of control the effect. So this is effectively like the factor that you're controlling in the uh, original Unsharp mask. And the radius is the radius of the Gaussian blur. So let's apply this now to the original one here. And in fact, we will. Let's zoom into here to get this letter that we're going to work on just see that's visible. So control J a couple of times on the layers to duplicate it. So I've got three layers. The top layer here, I'm going to go to a Gaussian blur and I will turn the radius up on that so I can see a bit of blur happening. 
Then I'm going to take that layer there and reduce the opacity down here to 50%. So then I need to invert it. And when I control I to invert it, look what happens here. I've got the edges here and now visible because I'm combining a negative and a positive, uh, which means everything goes grey except something that's being changed on just one of them. So I take that and I will shift click with the one at the bottom, control G, so all those are wrapped up into a group and go back to an original one here. Go to the blend modes here and go down to overlay because overlay makes the mid grey invisible. And now I can also add some more contrast to the uh, those edges there with, I could do it with a contrast control, but if I use the curves, I got even greater control. And the way to get that, I want to steepen the curve to create more contrast. So I can bring that one in here and that one in here. Trick with this, make sure it goes through the center so you get a balanced effect. So I, maybe I bring this in here and bring them, this one even here through the center. And there you can see that effect. There's the outside. It's, you know, it's over sharpened effectively, but to have the that effect. So there's the original here. Let's go back to the one I did down here. So let's zoom into that one here. So there's the original done with an unsharp mask. And here's our simulation. Pretty similar. Eh? Anyway, there we go. That's how the unsharp mask works, which means that now you know how you can do it and it's not that complex. You can do things like use different ways to change contrast. You can change the blur, the type of blur. You could even use a different blur apart from Gaussian blur. And you can also, there are a number of other things that you can use. This are deeper knowledge uh, to use in more improved and better ways. I'm sure you'll be able to figure something. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.